you are not necessarily responsible for your first thought, but you can become responsible for your second thought and your first action. Hi guys, my name is Emma Ammerman, and although I really wish I could be there in person with you guys today, for now this video version of me will have to do. To introduce myself a little bit, I am a competitor, an artist, sister, student athlete, Pepperdine alumni, aunt, friend, and among many other things, a mental health advocate. I want to take a little bit of time out of your guys' busy camp day to talk to you guys about that last part, mental health. Before we get started, I want to try something with everyone. So everyone close your eyes. I promise the girl next to you is doing it too. Okay, now I want you to think of anything but a polar bear. You can literally think of anything that you want, just don't think of a polar bear. Okay, now you can open your eyes and raise your hand if you thought of a polar bear at least once. I have done this activity so many times and every single time I still think of a polar bear. This is just a simple exercise to show you guys the power of our thoughts, even if we have other intentions. No matter how badly you wanted to follow my instructions and not think of a polar bear, you probably still did. This is because when our brain is given a command that has a negative in it, like don't, our subconscious mind usually blocks that part out and all that we hear is the rest of the command. Interesting, right? This can come into play in so many different parts of our lives. For example, when you go back to serve in volleyball and maybe you say to yourself, don't miss, or maybe your coach even tells you that, you're actually more likely to now miss your serve because now your miss serve is your polar bear. All that your brain hears is miss. You might have heard of this before, but now you can understand more as of to why. This comes into play off the court too. Say you're leaving the house for school one day and your mom says to you, Hey, don't let that really hard math test that you have today ruin your day. Now, even if the test goes better than you thought it was going to, and you get to see your best friends just like yesterday, maybe you have a worse day than you would have if she didn't say that. And your mom isn't trying to make you have a bad day, and you're not purposely trying to miss your serve. But as humans, naturally, 80% of our thoughts that we have every day are negative. 80%. This is because our brains are wired to be on the lookout for anything that could cause us pain or do anything harmful to us. Ever heard of fight or flight? It's your brain's function trying to protect you. There's a constant tug of war battle in your head between the positive and the negative. Both exist in every moment and both really want your attention. Whichever one you choose determines the course of your day. You wanna know something else interesting? Science has also found that 90% of the thoughts that you have today, you also had yesterday. So if 80% of your thoughts are negative and 90% of those thoughts you had yesterday, not only is choosing the polar bear in your mental tug of war battle going to give you a bad day, chances are that can turn into a bad week, month, well, until you choose to focus on the good, just because of one event. Now, as we all probably know, it's way easier to choose the good when everything's going well in our lives. Things are going well at home, our parents aren't fighting, maybe volleyball is going well for you, things are going well in school, we have great and supportive friends, but this isn't how life is all the time. Life is full of highs and lows. And as much as we want to, we can't always control the things that happen to us, but we can train our minds reactions to these life events. With practice, you can get better at choosing the good, the same way that you go to volleyball practice every week. Bet you didn't know your mind was a muscle like that, huh? As you get older, you become a beautiful combination of all of your lived experiences. But sometimes, really strong emotions like anxiety, sadness, doubt, even love and joy can overwhelm these experiences. These emotions have their purpose in our brain, and it's good to feel them. But if we start to feel a certain emotion a lot, we can start to identify with it and think that that is the only thing that we are. The truth is, you are not your emotions or thoughts about a certain experience. You are so much more than that. You can always return to the present moment to escape the overwhelming feeling of an emotional overtaking. It is only in the present moment where you can find gratitude for your ability to feel all the emotions, for all of the experiences that you have had, and for who you truly are. It is here that all three can coexist. And you can come back to the present moment anytime by focusing on your breath or something small that's outside of yourself. Because oftentimes these emotional feelings that we're hyper-focusing on are things that happened in the past not what's happening right now. 
One thing that we never know though is what is going on in the lives of people around us. Whether that be your best friend, your mom, your sister, your teacher at school, or even just a random girl that you met at camp this weekend. The only lived experience we can truly understand is our own. And we can't just assume that everyone is doing well all the time, even if they say so. Everyone is fighting hidden struggles. Now, thinking about that and just having understood how difficult it is to choose the good in your own brain when things are hard, wouldn't you agree with me that it is our job to be compassionate to everyone around us? We want to be there for our friends or strangers and be understanding even if they're having a bad day, even if we don't know why. It is just as important for you to be kind to your mind as it is to be kind to others. The way that you treat people can have an effect on the way that they feel about themselves and also have an impact on the choices that they make. Mental health awareness is on the rise right now and you guys have heard more about it than your parents or I ever did at your age. And this is an amazing thing, being educated on your mind and the way that it works. But with the additional stresses of things like social media, mental health issues are also on the rise, making this conversation and your understanding of it even more important. Every single time you open up social media, there's a constant comparison game going on in your head, and it's easier than ever to say mean things hiding behind the screen of your phone. We can avoid this by figuring out who you are and what you want and living every day in alignment with that. Well, how do I figure out who I am and what I want? I know it's a really big question and I don't necessarily have the magic answer for each of you, but I can ask a couple questions to hopefully help you figure out what your answer might be. I would like to meet the person who taught you most of the things that you know. And no, I'm not talking about your mom or your dad or your fourth grade teacher that was your absolute favorite. No, I'm talking about the person that taught you that how you did on your last test or how you do in your next volleyball tournament defined your self-worth. Or the person that taught you that you have to be like the girl at school who talks behind all of her friends' backs in order to be cool. Oftentimes, we are told that there's no one in the world like us, and we should embrace that. But instead, we try to become a mannequin of the person next to us. Although we've been well-educated in school and have the knowledge of the world at our fingertips with our phones, we are often still swayed by the bias of society. Many times it's easier to run to TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat and see how our friends are living and then just live in alignment with that. All of the FOMO, the desire to be famous, and the wants for likes and followers really distracts from the beauty of who you really are. For example, when was the last time that you looked in the mirror and made comments to yourself about what you didn't like? Or maybe you even said some of them to a friend. Why did you care? Who taught you what pretty was? Was it the girl that you follow on TikTok with the perfect body? Maybe she didn't even say a certain number or weight that you have to be or a certain hair color that you have to have, but you're subconsciously motivated by her looks while you stalked her profile. And you couldn't help but notice that she never posts content where she looks sad. And you also can't help but notice that you do feel that way and that you don't really look like her. So maybe that's why. See what I mean? Scrolling through social media all the time gives our subconscious mind someone, a thousand someones to compare ourselves to. And suddenly nothing about us is good enough. Ever been there before? I know that I have. 75% of high schoolers are at an average weight. And 50% of those girls and 25% of those boys constantly tell themselves that they are overweight. We are often influenced by the fears of whether or not we'll be accepted when the reality is that the opinion that people have of our appearance holds no gravity to the person that we are and most importantly have the potential to become. Why limit yourself with other people's expectations and opinions when the possibility for greatness comes from within? So, I have a challenge for you guys. One. Find people that you can trust and share your struggles with them and also listen to theirs. It's important to you to know that you are not alone in how you're feeling, but also that you are capable of giving love and support to others. Two, find out who you are and what motivates you to choose the good in your mind outside of school and volleyball. There's so much to be motivated by. Three, try not to attach your results to your self-worth. Temporarily sinking into the emotion of a moment is different than using that emotion to connect the event to your self-worth. Feel all of your emotions, but be so grounded in who you are that you don't let the results of your life events shake the path you're trying to create for yourself. And four, love simply 
love generously, care deeply, and speak kindly. We are all in this together. Love you guys. Thank you.